chapter 3, Ecclesiastes chapter 3. We're going to read verses 1 through 11. If you're trying to find the book of Ecclesiastes, you would go to the center of your Bible, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter number 3. We're going to read the first 11 verses of this chapter, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 11. Once you have found it, let's all stand as we read the Word of God this morning, Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1. Scripture says, to everything there is a, what, season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to cast away, a time to rend, and a time to sow. Time to keep silence, I like that one, and a time to speak. Time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. What profit hath he that worketh in that wherein he laboreth? I have seen the travail which God hath given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. Notice this next phrase. He hath made everything beautiful in whose time? His time. Also he has set the world in their hearts so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. I love this truth I'm going to be presenting this morning. I, I wish everybody w- could grab this. I told my wife this morning, I, I've been waiting to preach this sermon for a long time. I, I, as you all know, I, keep, I've, I have hundreds of sermons ready just to preach at any moment. Um, I could literally just kind of bring them up and let's preach. Um, but I don't want to do that to all of them this morning. We'll just get to one this morning. I, that, that would encourage you. Um, but this one's been ready for a while. Probably, I think, since last summer, this one's been ready. But I haven't had the peace, but I felt like this is the time to preach. I want to help our church. Um, And I I want to give you some thoughts that's going to help you to enjoy life better if you grab this truth and you live it. Um, A lot of people miss this, and they lose the joy that they're supposed to, that God wants them to have in life. I want to talk to you about the importance of seasons, the importance of of seasons. Father, take these next few minutes and allow me to be a help to your people, please. God, I I am just man, but you're God. You can speak to the hearts. I can speak to the ears. If I just speak to the ears without you speaking to the hearts, nothing's going to happen. No one's going to be helped. I pray that you'd allow these next few minutes, allow me to be your help to your people, please. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. When we talk about a season, I guess it can best be described as this, a period or a stage in life. Follow me very carefully. God made everything with seasons. The world has seasons. We have spring, summer, fall, winter. Now, spring, I like to put this beside spring. Spring, I always put this, is new beginnings. New beginnings. In the springtime is when you see the first peak of growth again. In springtime is when we plant so that we can have a harvest in the fall. Now, we, we, we like the spring. I love springtime of the year. Now, my daughter hates it because of allergies. But, um, but I love the springtime of the year. It seems like here in Oklahoma, um, this year, we, we went from, it seems like we went from winter to summer and didn't sent, tend to have a spring, and it's all happening at one time. And, um, but I, I love the springtime of the year. I like to see the grass starting to get green. I like to see the tulips that, that blossom, and I love the flowers that come up. I just like the greenness of the spring. It reminds me, I just like that growth that happens in the springtime. But then after spring comes what? Summer. Now, summer, I always put this besides summer, bountiful growth. 
So spring is new beginnings. Summer is bountiful growth. It's in the summer time of the year that that's when we tend to enjoy the excitement. That's when the ex- uh, that we have the the hard work of spring is now realized, and we can have the joy of the summertime. You know, families go on vacation and enjoy each other a little bit more in the summertime. And I am not against vacation. I think it's good to have a vacation. Just don't miss church while you're on vacation. I appreciate Brother Sandberg from California is in church away from his church while he's on vacation, and um, I'll let your pastor know that you actually were in church today, And um, but, but you have to understand there's something about the summertime. I love summertime. I like the heat of summer. Somebody say amen on that one right there. I was telling my class, I was, um, it was on Friday, I was just sitting outside and enjoying the heat of the summertime. I was just sitting in my backyard, letting the heat just, I mean, I was absorbed. My wife knows I love heat. Um, our, our house, she likes it a little bit cooler. I like it a little bit warmer. And um, you come to my house, and she's running the temperature gauge. There's icicles hanging from the ceiling. And um, if I'm running the temperature gauge, you know, we it's nice and comfortable. I mean, I mean, or maybe a little bit warm. And um, but I I like the summertime. But then after summer comes the fall. Fall. I I put this beside it. Harvest. Harvest. So you have spring, new beginnings. You have summer. That's the bountiful growth. That's when things really take off. Har- fall is the harvest time. That's when we go in and we, we reap the benefits of everything that we've worked so hard for in the spring and summertime. It's the harvest time of the year. It's the changing of the seasons. They say that in the, in the fall time of the year that it's a balance of day and night is the exact same amount. You have the equal daytime, equal nighttime in the fall. Tomorrow is the longest day time of the year, June 21st. And um, I always remember that. That's the day I got saved, June 21st, 1973, about 30 years before I was born. But anyway, you'll figure that one out. But, um, but, but, June, but, but we, I love the summertime, and I like the fall. My, my wife, is she loves the fall time. But then after the fall comes the what? Winter. Now, I put this beside this, roots grow down deeper. Roots grow deeper. Winter time is important because that's when the roots grow down. It's when they get deep. That's when, it, it, that really, if you have, if you don't have a good winter time, you're not going to have a good harvest the next year. Those roots get deep. That plant becomes more stable. That's that time that things, they, they store energy for the new growth. It looks like it's dying, but it's not dying. Yes, there's, the, the leaves are gone, and yes, but it's storing the energy. It's getting ready for the spring time of the year to get going again and winter time. Now, I'm not a big winter time fan. I don't like cold weather. I mean, you say, what's well, cold? Anything below 70 degrees is cold. Somebody say amen on that one right there. I, I'm not a cold weather person. I, I like the heat, but winter time comes this past winter, a little bit harder on me because it's quite a bit colder here in this area. But, but every season is important to life. Now, can I say this? Every season is essential to the next season. If you take away one season, one time frame, the next time frame is not as enjoyable. Right. Now follow me very carefully. Just like God gave the earth seasons, God gave our life seasons. Right. Not everybody can be a baby the rest of your life, although some people, I wonder about that. But anyway, <laughs> uh, you cannot be a baby your entire life. You go from that baby stage to the adolescent stage. You go from the adolescent stage to the teenage years. You go from the teenage years to the single life. You go from the single life to the young married life with no children. Then you start getting children and your life all of a sudden just kind of, um, it, it becomes a little bit more complicated. Then you get middle-aged and then you get seasoned in life. Hey, you like how I said that? You get seasoned in life, not old, seasoned in life. And um, your children are gone and you're, and you're, 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 you're getting towards the um, end part of your life. That seasons of life. Now listen to me. Every one of these seasons are important inside of our life. How many times have we seen somebody that they, they're, they're 50 years of age trying to act like a teenager? Or you see a teenager that wants to be an adult. 
or you see an eight-year-old that, 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 that wants to go back and being a baby. Now, listen to me. Every stage of life is important. I thank God for my parents because my parents were always, they were big on this right here. They said, son, there's a time for everything in life. And son, you better enjoy every stage of your life because that's where the joy of life comes from. Now, listen to me. I didn't always understand that. I remember I was, I think, um, 12 years of age. I was still in sixth grade, not yet seventh grade. We didn't have middle school back then. We had junior high. Yeah. You with me so far? That only the age or the ones who are aged and a little bit older understand that one. But there's junior high. We didn't have middle middle school. And we had junior high. And I would say, and I wanted to go on youth activities. My mom would say, no. I said, but they want me to come. She goes, I don't care. How old are you? I said, I'm 12. She goes, is there a teen on there? I said, no. She goes, okay, you're not going on the youth activity. I said, but mom, everybody wants me to go. She says, no, you're not a teenager. Somebody help me out just a little bit. What was my mom telling me? My mom was telling me, okay, she says you enjoy that stage in life. She goes, she says, son, you have several years of being a teenager that you can enjoy. Now enjoy being a 12-year-old while you're a 12-year-old. She says, because once you get 13, you can never go back to being 12. So you just take stay in that stage that you're in. Can I say the same thing about our finances? Finances go through seasons. You can't always have a plenteous time in finances. Everybody, you know, our, our country is always talking about getting rich and everything. Can I tell you, some finances go through seasons as well. And relationships go through seasons as well. Amen. Listen to me. I, when, I, when I counsel young couples getting ready to get married and, the, and I, in my office, I always tell them, now, now, now understand, I said, the first few months of marriage are going to be wonderful. I said, and then the next few months you're going to struggle. I said, I know you don't believe me, but I said those next few years, uh, next few months, after you get married, about the third, fourth month, you're going to hit a little brick wall. And I said, and because you're both now, the, the honeymoon stage is over. Somebody help me out. And now you're going you're gonna to start seeing each other as you really are. And now the adjustment period comes in where, where, men, you never get to see a mirror again for the rest of your life. Somebody help me out. So why do men go bald? Because they don't see a mirror. Is that right, Brother Dion? But anyway, you have to understand. It's just one. See, but, but I'm telling you, and then you get past that. Then all of a sudden you work through those little problems right there, and that joy starts. Why? Because everything has seasons. Everything has seasons. Um, the, the, uh, a young married, a young married um, or a single person. Listen to me, you're graduated from high school and you're single and you're trying to enjoy what it's like to be a young adult as a young married adult. No, enjoy your single years. Right. Enjoy them. And if you're a if you're a young married couple, enjoy being a young married couple because once those children come, you're not gonna be able to just to jump up and go do what you want to do at a whim. Right. Right. My daughter just got married to a jerk. I'm sorry, to, to, to my son-in-law. <laughs> He's uh, poor guy. I, I, my wife says, honey, you're hard on him today. I said, woman. But, no, I don't say that. But, <laughs> and my, my daughter just got married. So I had several people coming. I think Miss, Miss Delma came to me yesterday. We were talking about it a little bit. And, 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 um, and, but a lot of people said, how, how you I had a preacher friend call me this week, and he says, how you adjust until your daughter being gone to the empty nest? I says, wonderful. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I said, you know, we, we've enjoyed that time. We're, 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 you know, we've, we've gone through 21 years that we couldn't just go anywhere because she was there. You'll figure it out. But anyway, <laughs> now, but, but now she's gone. My, my wife and I will we'll jump up and we'll say, hey, you want to go do something? We just take off and do it. Don't have to worry about, hey, what about Katie? I just let, let the dogs take care of her. But anyway, <laughs> we, 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 we can jump up. We can go and do what we want to do. If we want to go to bed at 7 o'clock, we can go to bed at 7 o'clock. 
You say, crazy. No, it's a joy. It's the next stage. I have people say, was it hard? Was it hard for you to marry your daughter and let her go? I said, no. I said, I started preparing for that 21 years ago when she was born. Amen. Said, 21 years ago when she was born, I said to myself, I said, self, You've got her for 18 to 25 something years. Now enjoy those years because once she gets married, she moves on. You can, you can come back to a different stage of life. And I was, or I began to prepare for, for her to leave me, get this now for 21 years. I just never thought that she'd, mar- anyway. And um, <laughs> he's really a good son in law. I don't know when, but he is. He's a good son in law. And, 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 and she, he came along, and they met, and they got married, and, I've, and, and, and I'm en- we're enjoying having a son-in-law. We really are. And I enjoy it, but, but, but you see, it took, I, I was preparing myself for the next season. And we enjoyed the season with my daughter in the house. But we also enjoyed those years before she was, mar- before she was born. You see, every stage of life is important. Let me make several statements. I I want to help you out this morning because I'm afraid that what happens is, one, parents don't let their children take the next step in the season, and then a lot of times adults won't take that progression that is natural inside of life. Let me talk to you about seasons. One, you don't choose your season. You don't choose it. God does. He says a time to be, he says a time, he, he got, when you go through here, notice it says a time to love, a time to hate. You go back to verse seven, a time to rent, a time to sow. I don't, we don't choose those times. I don't choose when someone's born and I don't choose when someone's die, when someone dies. I don't choose when times are good. I don't choose when times are bad. I don't choose when trials are here. I don't choose when trials are gone. Time, season comes in life and God makes that choosing, but God makes everything beautiful in his time. Listen, do you understand? I look at this season, I understand, okay, I don't choose my seasons. I don't choose when something good is coming inside my life because if it was up to me, listen, okay, if it was up to me with the, with the weather patterns, I would have summer year-round. Yeah. Right. Sorry for those who don't like summer. You can get right with God. There's an altar right here. I, I, but, but listen to me. I don't choose it. I, don't, I didn't choose the snow this year. God did. Yeah. Right. Huh? You see, God's the one that, now now you don't choose your seasons of life. Which leads into statement number two. There's a purpose for every season. There is a purpose for every season. Listen to me. God didn't put, okay, God put seasons in your life for a reason. Now listen to me. As much as I may dislike a season, I've got to understand that that season's there for a reason. I cannot waste that season. If I, Okay, that season becomes worthless in my life and will leave an empty gap in life if I don't enjoy that season the way God wants me to enjoy it. Yeah, that's right. So I said, one, you don't choose your seasons. I said, number two, there's a, pro- there's a purpose for every season. Number three, enjoy the season you're in. It's, it will end. Amen. Enjoy the season you're in. It will end. Amen. Amen. Now, I want you to listen to me. You enjoy that season right now because it's going to end. We have, we have, we have um, graded, um, graded Sunday school classes. Now, why do we have graded Sunday school classes? Because every year you're going into another season. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Amen. We're teaching children there's a new season in life. You've got to adjust to it. Right. Got to adjust to it. Um, I, we have the, listen to me, I, I, I've realized, and, I, and when I talk to adults, part of my, when I'm trying to help adults, I'm trying to understand, okay, let's make sure we're in our season. How many times have you seen a 60-year-old man trying to act like a 20-year-old man, and it's like, really, would you grow up? Yeah, that's right. Brother Sandy Harjo and I were talking this morning. He's 62, one, two. He's 62 years of age. I'm about years younger than him. <laughs> he loves basketball. I love basketball. But we have both, no, but we were both talking this morning that we don't do a lot of basketball anymore. You know why? We enjoy our knees. 
Uh, he, he, he says, he says I, have, he, he said, I think he has a little bit of torn something in his knee, and he says, I just don't want to blow it out. I said, same here. Yeah. I said, I, I've known my stage. I, I, I come to a point where I say, I don't do that anymore. Yeah. Last time I played um, some football, some just some pickup football, I felt a little twinge in the back hamstring. I said, we're done. <laughs> we're done. Because I know, I know what I'm like when I get out in the field. I know what I'm like. I'm on the court. I go all in. I can't, I, I have a hard time just holding back. They say, well, just enjoy it. I don't enjoy it. I go all out. That's right. That's right. There comes a point you start going all out, your body will tell you you're not 25 anymore. Somebody help me out. So what am I doing? I'm learning. You, you, know, you, you, watch, these, you watch someone who's old get out there trying. I, I can still do it. No, you can't. About three minutes into it, you're, be, you're begging for oxygen. Where's the oxygen tank? Come on now. Do you understand? There are seasons to life. And we've got to say, okay, I don't choose my seasons. I've got to say there's a purpose for every season. Why? Because God chose it. Okay, listen carefully. So you're going through trials. You go through trials. God chose that season. Now there's a purpose for that trial. I don't know what it is. Preacher, why are we going through it? I don't know. I'm not God. I wish I could, I could say, come to, my, come to my office, let me sit down, you tell me what you're, what you're going through, and I say, this is what God is, what's, what God is doing in your life. I can't do that. I'm not God. I am man. I am a man of God. I do hold the position of pastor, but God doesn't give me that insight. I do know this. I know that God's in control and that God orders those seasons. I don't understand everything, so I just trust the God that does know what he's doing. Why? Because God's the one who chooses the seasons. You don't choose your seasons. I said to you, there's a purpose for every season. Number three, enjoy the season you are in. It will end. Number four, don't rush the next season. Don't rush the next season. You say, what are you talking about? Don't jump to the next one until you're there. Stay where you are. There's a purpose for Now listen to me. Okay. There's, there's parents that have children that want to act like they don't have children, want to pawn their children off to mom and dad to babysit all the time. That's your responsibility. Amen. That's the stage of life you're in. And your children need you. Amen. Somebody help me out on that one right there. Amen. Too many young, middle-aged adults look at children as if they're a weight and a, and, and a, and a bother in their life. Children are a heritage of the Lord. Amen. And some of you parents, you're always wanting to go around and play instead of enjoy your children. One day those children will grow up and they'll be gone and you'll say, well, I wish I could have them back. You had them for 18 years, but you didn't enjoy them while you had them. Listen, enjoy the season. Don't jump to the next one. Somewhere you've got to say, God chooses my seasons. Therefore, there's a purpose to that season. I'm not going to get this now. I am. I'm going to enjoy it while I'm in it because it is going to end. Okay, let me go. Let me go back to that second. So stop trying to go back to a past season. I grew up in California. Don't hold that against me. I grew up in California, and I and I always it was I'd always chuckle when I was a teenage boy, and now even now at the age that I'm in right now, I go out there and I see I see guys who are 50 and 60 years of age thinking they're still great surfers, and they try to act like a surfer boy. Son, you've got wrinkles. Somebody help me out just a little bit. That six pack turned into a keg. Huh? Yeah. You're trying to act like you're some 20-year-old. There's a joy being in the stage that you're in if you stop trying to run from it. As much as I tease my son-in-law, I enjoy having a son-in-law. 
You say, why? Because he now pays her bills, not me. <laughs> I told her before he got married, I said, you better figure out how much she's cost. I said, she cost us a lot of money. Somebody say amen to that right there. <laughs> now, now, I enjoy having a son-in-law now. I enjoy having somebody else. I've never had a boy. So now I have, now I have somewhat of a son-in-law that, that is now in my family. I enjoy that. Now I've got somebody to pick on and beat up. Now, don't rush the next season, but don't jump back to it. Which leads to number five. God knows why he placed you in your present season. So what you're going to have to do is be patient with the season. Notice what he says. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. His time. You know what that means? It becomes ugly when you don't let God do his time. Let God work. Life will turn out great. Hmm? Amen. Amen. I look at my father-in-law. 70, how old are you, Dad? 72 years of age. It's hard for me to believe he's 72 years of age. He looks 105. But anyway. <laughs> 72 years of age. I look at a man who's I think has enjoyed every stage of his life. I see him now in the seasoned years of life and still getting to serve God as best that he can with his health issues. Amen. Now, you listen to me. That comes from someone who understood every stage of life has its purpose. Yes, sir. I want to trust God. Yeah. Right. Amen. I don't have to know the purpose of the season. I just have to know the one who brings the season, knows what he is doing. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding, and all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. I look at you, and I see people that sometimes you're going through a season of life, and you say, preacher, will it ever end? It, it, it always ends. So whether you're in the hard time of that season of your life and you're struggling and you're facing the heartache of life and maybe maybe death has come, maybe sickness has come, maybe um, problems have come, I'm telling you, every season does end. Right. Why? They've always ended and another season comes along. I may be in a season of heartache right now, but I know there'll come a season of joy if I just trust the God who knows what's do what he's doing this season. Amen. 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 I look at Miss Hazel. She's 20 years pregnant right now, it looks like. She can't wait to have that baby. But nine months will come and that baby will be born. But right now, see, when the baby's born, it'll kick, but not the way she can feel it in that belly right now. Huh? And you listen to me, and then all of a sudden that baby comes, and that baby will look so sweet. And, 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 and hopefully it doesn't look like, like a Martoni. <laughs> That baby will come and, oh, so sweet, but you better enjoy those little infant stages. Because every stage comes. I get concerned for people because you're missing, because you won't take the season you're in and get everything from it that you can. You get old, you have gaps in life that you've missed. Let me illustrate. Let me use your brother Means. Would you come, brother Randy? Oh, both you guys get up here. Uh, let me get somebody else, brother. Come on up here. Just kind of stand. Leave a gap between you and brother Turk, if you can. You just come right here. We're gonna let him represent 
young years of life because he is a baby. <laughs> we'll let him represent another stage, and there's supposed to be a stage right here. Then you got this stage, this stage, and this stage. Now I'm here at 52 years of age. What happens, they call it, they, a lot of people say it's midlife crisis. Let me tell you what the midlife crisis is. Somewhere they missed a stage. They're trying to go back and fill this stage. You can't fill it. You should have filled it while you were there. And instead of, whether it's right here and you, and you didn't want to enjoy this season, so you tried to come back and live over here, you missed this one. Or maybe it was right here. And then you didn't, then you, 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 you wanted to jump that season and so you jumped over here, but you missed it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Amen. Right. Then you come right here. And you look back at life and a lot of times, why don't you sit down right there? Just sit down. Step forward, men. A lot of times, some people have more than one gap in their life. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Didn't enjoy the seasons. Didn't enjoy the seasons. You make, sir, that in every stage, come on. Joseph, come here. That in every stage, you live that stage. Why don't you men move down, Brother Joseph? You just get to his right if you can. Hurry up, son. Hurry up. The Lord's going to come. You enjoy every stage. Yeah. Hey. You make sure while you're there where Brother Joseph is and teenage young man, sharp young man, enjoy those years. Yeah. Hey. Amen. Oh, yeah, I got to move you guys around. Uh, right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. All right. There you go. You get married, have no children, enjoy those years. Yeah. Your wife, pregnant, she's not 25, she's 35 years pregnant. She wants to have that baby now. <laughs> but enjoy these years while you have while that baby's in the womb. Yeah. Hey, amen. Then you come and oh, I should have used you for something else. <laughs> then you come and you have a bunch of children. Hey! Amen. I didn't mean it that way, but it came out that way. Sorry. I don't know how that came out. Hey. Enjoy every one of those children. Hey. Amen. Enjoy being a parent. Enjoy them annoying the fire out of you when you're asleep and they come and thump your nose. (laughs) Then your children grow up. You get to where you're now. Your children are gone. It's just the empty nest again. Enjoy the empty nest. Then you get to the seasoned years of life. You enjoy those seasoned years. Amen. Amen. Because every one of these stages are important to enjoying life. I'm talking to people this morning, you're living a life of, of denial. I am not 25 years of age, whether I like it or not. I can color my hair. That still doesn't take that. It's gray underneath the color. Somebody help me out. I can try to dress up and look sharp and say, let's go play some ball. And I may be able to play ball for about 25, 30 minutes, but I'll go home that night and say, honey, where's the ice? Yeah. 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 Right. That's right. I think I'll live the next two days in an ice tub. Yeah. I'm not 25 years of age. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I enjoy the season that I'm in. Why? So that way I don't come in life and have a gap there and have a gap there and I can get to the, some stage of my life and say, oh, oh, man, I wish I could live this over again. You can't live it over again. Take where you are. Trust the God who has you where you are. And say, I want to enjoy where I'm at. Hey. Mom and dad, can I tell you, don't you hold your children back from going to the next stage. And don't you make them grow up too fast or make them grow up too slow. You let them enjoy every stage. Because those children need those stages of life so they don't have gaps when they get to be an old man. Thank you, men. I always get concerned with people. 
that don't take the season they're in and enjoy it. You have a father here today. He's alive. Enjoy it. One day he won't be. Hmm? One day he'll be gone. And some of you have issues with your parents. Get over them. Get over them. One day they'll be gone and you won't have a chance to get over them then. But the one season everybody must come to, whereas in eternity they'll look back and regret. And that's the season of accepting Christ as Savior. God says, as it is appointed unto man once to die. After this, the judgment. You only have one life to live, one life to accept Christ as Savior. You say, when's that time? When, when should I get? I'll wait till later. You don't know later's going to come. Today could be the last day of your life, and if you've not put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ to be your Savior, one day you'll slip out into a hell, an eternal hell, as the rich man did, and he looked up from hell in torments, and he said, Father Abraham, Father Abraham. No, it's too late. You had your season. You didn't take it. You didn't trust Christ. Now's the time to get saved. Now's that time to come to Christ. And say, I need you as my Savior. I know I'm a sinner. I'm on my way to hell. But you died on the cross. You said your blood was buried, rose again. So I could go to heaven. I trust you. You get that season settled. It helps you to enjoy the rest. God makes everything beautiful in his time. If you don't want life to become ugly... Let God direct your life and you accept where you are. Learn as much as you can from it. Enjoy it because another stage will come. Father, thank you for what we've learned this morning. A truth, a simple truth, but a truth that so many people miss. They have those gaps in life. And they wonder, they want to go back. You can't refill up a gap that's there. It's there. It's done. It's over. So now let's just enjoy where we are. God, I pray that you'd help your people, please. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed, no one's.